Hello, I'm Al Jadeke. I'm one of the three instructors in the engineering design program. And today what I want to do is uh, cover a little material in our Statics 2 course. But this is actually some review from last spring. So I want to go through the four part problem solving process with you. Uh, make sure that you remember what those four steps are and how we're going to apply them. So I will go through a sample problem to give you that. First off, the four part problem solving is right here. The steps are very easy and we can even trim them down to shorter names. But in the first step, what we want to do is define the unknown. Why are we doing this problem? Problem solving is supposed to uh, have an, uh, an outcome. And as we move through the steps, that's what we're working toward. So once we know the unknown, the purpose of the problem solving, we go into identifying the knowns. There are some things that are going to be given to us and we want to go and take a look at those items, list them up, and if we use variables for the unknown and then also variables for the knowns, it can help us in the solution process because the step three here is to find a solution. That's the toughest part usually. And what we're going to do is we're going to find formulas that will allow us to use our variables in them and then go through the mathematical solution. The conclusion is very important. Just like step one is saying what we're trying to do, step four is telling us this is the end. This is the, the conclusion of the process that we've just gone through. So those are the steps. We covered those last spring. Want to make sure that we really get them rock solid again because we're going to use this over and over and over uh, all quarter. So as we move into a sample problem, I have one set up here right now. Uh, there's a figure right here. It's just a simple little bar, rectangular bar. And the, the problem states the figure shows a steel bar that is in tension. You're supposed to find the tensile stress in the bar. So this bar has some unknown length, doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Uh, we have a one and a half inch height and we have a 0.25 quarter inch thickness. So if we come in here and put in some units, we can say that this is an H for height and this will be our T for thickness. And then this bar is in tension, so we have the force arrows pointing outward. This is a two-force member, if you remember that from last uh, course. So in a two-force member, we're putting tensile, tensile force in this object. So now that we have the problem, we can start going through and using the four steps here. So in our first step, we want to know what is our unknown. And that's going to be our variable S sub T. So that's the stress due to tension. So we kind of read these backwards, tensile stress. So the units on this are going to be in PSI, pounds per square inch. Second step, what do we actually know? Well, in this problem, we know that there's a force, and that force is 4,000 pounds. Since a two-force member... We have 4,000 pounds going in each direction. Now, our force here is not 8,000. It's just the 4,000 pounds. Because as we break this object, we have an area going this way with 4,000 pounds. We have a separate area going this way with 4,000 pounds. So our force here and our knowns is 4,000 pounds. Now, the next thing that we have is the height. Our height is 1 in a half inches, so a little h, 1.5 inches. And then we have the thickness of the material. That's a quarter of an inch. So a little t, 0.25 inches. Now as we're going through and identifying these different variables, we're going to be using the same type of variables for a wide variety of problems. Uh, the more standard variables we can use, the easier it is to find the formulas for us to move on. So that covers our step one and our step two. What are we looking for and what are we trying to find? 
In our solution, we're going to be taking a look at the S sub T, the F, the N, uh, I'm sorry, the H, and the T. Well, we should know at this point in time that this rectangular area is the area of a rectangle. And we put an A and then a sub box rectangle so that we keep track what, what shape we're dealing with. Now, with this S and the F and the A, that should bring to mind our, our main stress formula. Stress is equal to force divided by area. Now from here, we're looking for specifically a tensile stress. So I like you to use the subscripts here, the sub T, so that's tensile stress. The force is just going to sit here by itself, but this area I want to identify what is the shape. And then we usually come in and say, how many areas are there? And this is a little n, not an h. So this little n has to come down into our knowns. We've been shown a particular picture here that shows just one shape. So our number of areas is 1. Now as we move through the, the formula, our S sub T is equal to the 4,000 pounds divided by the number of areas, in this case there's only one, times our area. And if we use the big bracket, we've got the little h times little t. So in the, the square brackets here, we have actually the area that we identified up here, the area of the rectangle. Now, we can come in here and add in the variables below. So we've got 4,000 pounds divided by 1 times 1.5 inches times 0.25 inches and that's our formula. From here we can crunch out our numbers on the calculator and we're going to find out that our S sub T is equal to 10,000 666,000.6667 PSI. Well, that's the basic solution. Uh, normally when we do any problem, we should have some type of a number of decimal places that we want to carry this out to. And our conclusion is a really good place where we can fit that. So in a problem like this, two decimal places is going to be all that we really need. So our step four is going to give us an answer of 10,666.67 PSI. And that's now the conclusion of this type of a tensile stress problem. Now tomorrow what we're going to do is work several more uh, of these sample problems. We'll deal with not only just the tensile stress, but we'll deal with uh, problems that are coming into the shear stress and the compressive stress. This is a very simple cross-sectional shape that we worked with right here, just a basic rectangle. So we'll get into some more complicated shapes as well. And then following that, we can add in uh, more numbers of areas. So little by little, we build the complexity to a problem like this. We're going to follow that uh, section by working on some, uh, some more advanced stress problems. So the formula S is equal to F over A is the basic formula. We're going to be developing many other formulas that uses that as a base and will transpose to develop the specific problems. So that concludes this particular session.